I'm showing you every single known asteroid in our solar system. And all these are correct orbits, by the way. These are all plotted accurately. And these are the 10,000 asteroids whose orbits cross Earth's orbit. And that means they can hit Earth. There are 10,000 of them that NASA has found through a program called Space Guard. In some sense, you can think of this as a giant cosmic shooting gallery. And when I said that we are playing roulette every day with our own civilization, it's really true. This is my largest photograph so far. It measures 10 by 36 feet. He was kind enough to provide me with a four-minute sitting where I worked on his left profile, and I composed over 140 photographs of his body. I haven't printed and mounted it yet. When I do, it'll weigh 1,200 pounds. It's a 60 gigabyte file. It uses 400 gigabytes of memory. Probably has 300 layers if I never compress it or flatten it. Really grateful to him, to that well, to give me that encounter. That, that, that represents, you know, five years of waiting. All right, you ready to do some walking? I am. Matt, why don't you tell us a little bit about your experience in EXO? I started using EXO in December of last year. And since I've used EXO, I look at life a lot different. I appreciate things more different that I couldn't do before, but with EXO's help that I, I'm going to be able to do in the future. What is unique, though, is the sheer level of abstraction that we bring to our empathy. We feel the pain for a character in a novel. We feel the pain for the people killed in the eruption in Pompeii thousands of years ago. We could look at this and we say, oh no, the poor Navi home tree is falling over an avatar. These are pixels. This is what we've accomplished in longevity and related health technologies before health and medicine was an information technology. Uh, as we master the information processes underlying our biology, is we can deliver biotechnology with nanotechnology, increase our intelligence by merging with artificial intelligence, uh, this will go into high gear. Why do we do this? Is it really strictly for the science? We landed on, at 10.30 at night on the Sunday, the 5th of August, which was 1.30 in the morning for the folks in New York. And here, a whole bunch of folks are out in what I'm told was a lightning storm, watching on the big diamond screen, us land. Now, are they there because they're dying to know about the pH and salinity of the primordial environment on the surface of Mars? No. Something else is going on, something more. Would I consider myself an artist or a scientist? What a great question! <laughs> I don't think there's any difference. The most remarkable thing about doing Mythbusters is the realization that, that step two of the, of the scientific method, or step one, create a hypothesis, is a deeply creative act.